was driving around the other day and I noticed this this yard uh, it's a spring cut it's not I wouldn't call it tall yet but we'll leave that up to debate so we've got some edges that are kind of jacked up uh, we've got a bunch of seed pods those are from the maple trees and over here we got some decently tall grass it's a little overgrown, but it's not too bad. Now I do got to watch out because we've got some roots popping up. Definitely don't want to hit the blades on those. Let's go take a look at the rest of the yard. Looks like we got a lot of roots all the way, all the way through the yard. I got these white rock areas, so we'll have to watch out when we're throwing our grass. Not, not to get a ton in there, but it is what it is. We'll do our best not to. All that comes down to cutting pattern. I don't use mulch kits or anything like that. Got their doggy in the house. But don't you come near my house. Mmm. Go ahead and name that plant. You know what that is. It's a plant that'll give you the itch. Ooh. We got problems. We can get through that. All right, so now in the back. Ah. We got some clover. Got some henbit. The thing with henbit is it holds a lot of moisture. That's normally pretty rough to cut. That's the one with the purple flowers in the spring and then, um, you know, starting to die out. It dies out with the heat. So you have it real early spring and then you don't see much of it the rest of the year. We got some, some poana. This stuff gets real thick, a lot of seeds on it. That's a pain to cut when it's real, real thick. We'll get it looking good. Let's go ahead and knock it out. Mmm, I just wish he had an OnlyFans, and that way I can watch him look naked. Smokey, get off the computer, you are interrupting my playtime. I don't see why you gotta ruin everything. Hey, welcome back to the channel, I'm Kevin Hansen. In this video, I'm gonna be going over a random tall yard that I found that I thought would make a good video for you to explain uh, kind of the processes and procedures and what goes through my mind and what techniques I use when I'm cutting a yard that might be tall or if you're starting a business maybe that bi-weekly yard that you picked up and uh, you're you're starting to cut you want some tips and tricks on it now if you like watching these type of videos for the satisfying appeal and you don't know yet I wanted to let you know we do have another channel it's the boring channel and it's the same awesome work videos with no commentary over top so if you like the relaxing videos, I fully understand. You can find them over at the Boring Channel. Now, you can pick up yards like this in the spring. They're a dime a dozen. You can walk down the block, knock on the doors, pick them up that way. Maybe you throw out door hangers, uh, Facebook, Craigslist, whatever. You're going to get calls for these type of yards. And you're going to find that they haven't had their first cut of the season. They've got leaves built up, stuff like that. So the first thing I like to do is go through with a blower. And I'm just doing a rough pass getting stuff onto the turf so that when I cut it with the mower, it shreds it up into the lawn. Now, if you're new in the business, you don't have to have the nicest racks. You can keep your weed eater in the back of the truck. That's what I did when I started out. But if you do, and no matter what you do, make sure you lock it up. Lock up your blower, lock up your weed eater. Those are gonna be the number one pieces of equipment that are highly targeted from thieves in the neighborhood. You know, it's something that they can grab real quick and easy and drive off with. Uh, your gas cans are also going to be targeted quite a bit. So if you run a bicycle lock through those and lock them up to something on your truck, you know, uh, an eye hole or something, just make sure you, if you, if you put a lock on there, it's not going to stop them, but it will slow people down and more than likely they'll drive up the road to find the next guy that doesn't have his stuff locked up. Now I like to use my weed eater to do the edging and weed eating both unless the edge is really 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 out of shape and then occasionally I'll bust out my metal blade edger but it's pretty rare uh, for me most of the time if I'm going to use that it's more for the satisfying appeal in a video but as far as regular reoccurring uh, mowing I like to use my weed eater a common question that gets asked is why do I have 
the uh, guard off my weed eater. So the the big uh, plus to having a guard on a weed eater is that it has a cutter on it that cuts the string to the correct length. Now if you are a pro and you weed eat a lot, like several hours a day, you're going to get really good and you can hear what your engine's doing and you can also feel the uh, vibration in the machine to know when your string's too long or too short. And so the guard just kind of gets in the way. It keeps you from having a real, real wide swath if you have to weed eat sections of a yard, say if it's too wet. So there's a lot of big time saving uh, pluses. The other thing is it ups your visibility. The downside is it doesn't have a guard. So you have to watch where your debris is flying. Of course on these echo guards, they're, they're so thin when you get them from the factory that they don't really stop anything anyway. Uh, so you, you really have to just be aware of uh, where your debris is flying no matter what. Now a quick tip for edging is always move forward when you're edging in the direction that the, the rotation of the head is working in. So you want it to pull you along, you don't want to fight it as it's pulling you back. So if you went backwards in the opposite direction of the string, what you're going to have is you're going to have uh, a wider groove and it's going to try to pull you out of there. But if you go in the direction of the string, what's going to happen is it's going to try to pull you out, but it's pulling you along. So you just have to get uh, familiar with how to hold the weed ear. Now I like to hold mine like this, upside down, but um, you know I used to hold it uh, different, but Echo changed their exhaust. So I used to rest my elbow on the exhaust, kind of like it looks like I am here, but I'm not. Um, I'm resting it on the center of the unit, but they changed the exhaust and the exhaust, uh, the heat shield for the exhaust puts off a lot of heat, so it'll actually burn your arm. But the big plus side is they finally fixed the spark plug wire that used to shock you every time you got sweaty and you accidentally bumped into it, which was never a good feeling. So coming around this uh, rock bed, what you're going to hear is I'm using variable speeds, so don't think that you have to be full throttle on that weed eater no matter what. A lot of the times, if I'm in a situation where there's going to be rocks or something that might fly up and hit a window, I'm actually using a lower speed. When I'm edging, I, I like to use a lower speed, so I'm giving it maybe 25% uh, to half throttle. It's pretty rare that I go all out with the weed eater. Maybe if I'm doing a wide path in the yard where I'm weed eating sections, it's just pretty rare. You don't need to use full throttle. Now a big plus to weed eating in the yard before you mow is that any of the clippings from weed eating are actually going to fall into the turf and then from there you can mow them up, it shreds them up and it looks a little better. So sometimes um, you'll see me mow before I weed eat. That's kind of a tendency that started after I started taking on a lot of uh, weekly lawns. So your, your procedure kind of changes from bi-weeklies to weeklies. Like now I'm used to walking forward. So even right here, I'm catching myself because I'm not used to cutting tall crazy, although I know that's what you guys see a lot on my channel is tall and crazy, but I'm used to cutting weekly lawns. So walking forward with weekly lawns are a lot easier. So what's going to happen is when you're walking forward and the grass is tall and thick, it's actually going to pull your uh, weed eater head out of the way. But if you walk backwards, it'll actually shoot everything back into the yard and it's easier to kind of pull the weed eater along versus push through everything that's growing that's kind of tall and thick, if that makes sense. So, you know, just just throwing it out, you will see different techniques used by different guys online depending on what type of work they do. So the big plus side to walking forward with your weed eater is you're walking forward all day long versus walking backwards all day long. But sometimes walking backwards you are able to take care of a job a little bit better. It's a little easier. And like I said, the way that the grass discharges, when I walk forward with the weed eater, it's shooting the grass back in towards the flower bed versus when I walk backwards, it's shooting it out into the turf. That's all stuff that would come into play depending on how tall and thick the grass is. If you're cutting weekly, well, you're cutting off such a minute amount of grass that what you see go back into the flower bed actually hides in the mulch or in the rocks or stuff like that and it's not visible to the eye so much but when you're doing a bi-weekly lawn and you're cutting off a dramatic amount 
well that's going to build up against whatever you're you're trying to cut the end results might look like dry clumped up nasty grass if you don't use the blower to actually blow that debris back out in the yard and then shred it up like you should now um, whenever I go up toward towards a house I don't like to uh, edge and shoot anything back at a house especially if it's wet so you'll notice I always edge towards the uh, garage door and stuff like that it's very rare that I do it uh, the other direction if I do it's because of um, you know just the situation of the environment but what happens if it's real wet you'll end up rooster telling mud all over the garage now another big downside to walking backwards like I'm, I am right now going back to the uh, situation the environment is that you're not as um, it's not as easy to see everything around you you have to look around more you have to use your peripherals more you have to have situational awareness because what's going to happen is uh, occasionally you're going to bump into something with the back of your foot and you're going to fall down. Now the one thing to remember about that is that if you are self-employed and you have a small business and this is your sole source of income, falling could be the end of your income. Alright, right here I'm going to use a weed eater to mulch these leaves up in the corner. That's something I do like to do if there's a tight space or somewhere I can't really reach to or it's a headache to blow the leaves out of. And so if you do that like, you know, the first week and then the next week before you mow, you blow everything out again, then after that second cut, everything's gonna look really sharp. Now you notice in the backyard that there's a ring all the way around the back of the property. That's from dogs running in a circle around the property. They'll make a pathway, uh, but that's right in front of this flower bed. So what we're gonna do on this flower bed is it's not a flower bed there's nothing in there maybe a few bulb plants so we're going to just knock that down to dirt because it's going to look better as dirt than it will if i try to weedy around the few bulb plants that are in there now if there were a bunch of bulbs irises stuff like that i would you know obviously try to weed eat around them and then when they're done blooming i'll just knock them down that's typically what i'll do uh then i go the extra mile and i actually edge this uh, I don't know why I do that kind of stuff, but it does look a little bit nicer, especially if you do it consistently and that flower bed were, were to butt up to decent grass. Now you'll notice that when I was edging there, where I'm rooster telling would actually be towards a house. I'm flipping sides over here because over there there's actually a lot of uh, sand and grit and dirt and debris and that it could actually shoot towards the house. And a lot of these back porches have uh, sliding glass doors. Now where I was at, for the first section it's backed up to brick so I wasn't too worried about anything and it's not real muddy because keep in mind just like I said with the garage door you can sling a bunch of mud into that brick and it would look nasty definitely on the back porches always be aware of where you're shooting debris because you can easily knock out a sliding glass door and it's always like four or five hundred bucks and everybody's gonna say well you need business insurance for that yeah okay I'll be the first person on here that I think has honestly ever admitted that I didn't have business insurance for several years I didn't okay uh, with mowing the good thing is that it's a very 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 low risk if it's just you as a solo operator I'm not saying big things can't happen but the likelihood of something actually happening is pretty low if you're just aware and careful with your tools so we carry a two million dollar liability insurance now we get it through his cox if you're if you're wondering if you want to know how much it costs it's about 50 or 60 bucks a month it's really not much at all you know before i got insurance i thought it was going to cost a fortune but it really isn't that much money and for the amount of peace of mind it's well well worth it but before that what you're going to find out is that if you're working solo you'll replace a window probably once every every other year and if you have employees expect to replace a window every year now I was showing you that plant that's creeping Charlie, that's a common weed, um, it's like a ground cover weed. I guess I was showing you that because that weed sets my sinuses off every year. We're coming in and going to do the weed eating around the perimeter. And that's the thing, like if you're teaching somebody weed eating, just let them know, hey, it's perimeter and then obstacles and um, that'll kind of make it easier make sure they focus on perimeter and obstacles now i didn't go down the side of this house there's like a, a walmart shopping cart over there and stuff and i'm just not going to mess with it one of the common things you'll see with these fences is sometimes they have a rail 
and so you have to weed eat to almost twice because you weed eat the bottom of the fence and then you weed eat above the rail where the grass is growing through there so you know that's something that's pretty annoying and then you'll see me flip my head on the weed eater to actually get up close to the poles and whenever you are weed eating um, wood wood fence is a real good one to learn on because you can hear the string hitting it and vinyl so whenever you're weeding wood and vinyl be very very careful because you don't want to scar and chew it up and uh, you'll tear it up and vinyl you'll eat right through it sometimes so you have to be very very careful you just want the string to, to be close enough to kiss the wood and make a very very small amount of sound but not enough to actually damage it you know a lot of the times whenever you see you know say fence posts like this somebody has just murdered that fence post with a weed eater string and you know it's not an uncommon thing so if you want to be a good contractor be the guy that's not tearing up somebody's yard so right here you see me flip the weed eater up like I'm edging that's so I can get into that corner and and have it to where it actually looks sharp there's not a bunch of grass that's left behind there it's just real quick and easy now stuff like this in the fence you can come through with a pair of hedge trimmers and cut that out or you can hit it with your string real quick the best thing to do is have a pair of pruners that you would come in and cut it out and if you're doing regular maintenance on a property I would highly suggest you going above and beyond the extra mile if it's only a small amount of work so if it's something like that just one little thing yeah knock that with a pair of hedge trimmers or whatever and then from there just keep it up with your weed eater string by flipping it sideways just be careful not to let the weed eater string hit the fence and put a bunch of circles on there it'll fade out in time but it'll look nasty right after you did it and you don't want to leave the property looking worse than when you showed up weed eating in corners a lot of the times you'll see me weed eat real large pathways you know um, I can actually fit my mower over in those sections but it's more difficult to fit the mower in that area than it is to weed eat it real fast so if you're working as a team say it's you and one other person the person on the weed eater should make the person on the mower's life a lot easier and the same goes for the person on the mower they should look out for the guy with the weed eater and try to you know make it to where they don't have to weed eat massive sections but it's always this back and forth working as a team so that everything flows the way it properly should now chain link you're going to weed eat chain link the best way to do it's walking backwards because your string is going to be um if, if you walk forward what's going to happen is the string is going to pull your head of the weed eater string into the fence but if you walk backwards again you can just let the string kiss the fence you don't want it hitting hard just kissing the fence and then you're pulling through versus being pulled into so if you do it that way you won't use a lot of weed eater string but if you do it the other way you'll use a lot of weed eater string now if you want to go above and beyond the neighbor next door has got a bunch of bunch of stuff growing through the fence you can flip the weed eater up and do some treat it like edging but you just cut everything off that's growing through the chain link if you're able to get both yards and you do both yards just like that it'll make that chain link look really 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 sharp the other thing is that's going to help keep trees from growing in and stuff like that. And it just overall is going to make the job look better. Now I already talked about this but I'm going to throw it out again. If you're starting your business, don't worry about having the nice, shiny, brand new, beautiful racks. They're a big plus. Racks are nice. When you're able to put your equipment in racks and lock it up, it's way better than having to use cable locks. But the biggest thing is just lock it up so it's not stolen and you're all good. Now the ferris, we're not going to go ahead and use the ferris on this yard because the front's got the two obstacles, the big trees on it. So I'm going to go ahead and park this 
in this uh, yard beside here. Whenever I park my Ferris, I pull the key out. It's just one little added security. What we're going to use to mow is the X mark. It's got the uh, Velky tow behind package, whatever they call it for theirs, I'm not sure. But it's the uh, 36 inch. Uh, I started with a push mower, and the 36 inch is obviously much quicker. Now, with the stand on package on the back, it makes things go a lot faster. Typically, what I'll do is I'll mow two passes shooting everything inward away from the street so you're going to do two perimeter passes cleaning everything up now because the yard's small and the grass is overgrown and we have those uh, rock beds in the center i don't really do that on this property but the idea is to use the mower in a way to prevent a bunch of cleanup on the property later you don't want to spend a bunch of time blowing stuff out of the street unless you have to uh, obviously try to avoid blowing grass into the street. I've talked about that in other videos, but for me it's less of for dangers of you know motorists and people that might be in the road versus it makes your job much easier. It's going to make your job faster. It's going to make your job more efficient and you're going to make more income because you're able to knock properties out quicker. So you can tell somebody and say no, 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 or you can teach them and say this will make you money. And that, to me, is a better way of teaching somebody than screaming, well, that's really horrible to ever blow grass into the street. A good contractor, once you know your tools, it's not going to happen. So for me, I use a side discharge on everything. I, I very, very rarely put something to block the discharge on my mower. But, you know, I, I occasionally do. Like the Ferris has the flap on the side to point it down at the ground. The problem with that is what's going to happen is if you have that discharge flap you're gonna get uh, wind rows if it's tall or thick and then the other issue is if you're say mulching and you go across something like this it's gonna bog down the engine it's gonna get everything caught underneath it's gonna cut it up but it's gonna keep it under the deck and when you're going forward and your tires roll over it, it's gonna mat it down and make it stick in the grass and then you're gonna have these massive six inch wide tire paths of wet grass that's matted down the grass then you have to use your blower and blow them out so for me the side discharge your equipment's running the best and it's just the easiest way to use it but you have situations like this where I'm shooting kind of sideways right here that's to avoid it getting in the rock beds I don't care if a little bit gets in there because I can use my blower to blow it back out and clean it up a bit but ultimately I don't want to shoot all of that into the rock beds now one of the things you're going to see right here is that I go directly from cutting the front yard and then I go cut the backyard. I'm not going to clean up this grass yet. What I'm going to do is I'm going to give it a few minutes. Say on a real hot day, it's going to have time to dry out. Either way, it's going to have more time to dry out than if you just clean it up right away. So this is a method you would use if you were trying to avoid removing grass. So again, I side discharge. I don't bag. If you wanted to, you could go over this yard with a bagger and you could bag everything. That would be you know it would leave a cleaner result at the end but it would also slow you way down and then you would have more time that you would spend bagging up the grass carrying it to your truck and then putting it at the dump site so you had an extra trip there so not only really more physically fatiguing because you're moving the bag back and forth from the unit and if you've ever used a bagging system for one of these walk behinds or a zero turn they are ridiculously heavy. So for me, I don't like doing it. I don't like doing it, I don't do it. That's just, your business model can be created around what you do or don't like doing. Now, we can kind of get away with that because typically if you would have to bag around here, it would be for an ugly bi-weekly yard that's weeds. We don't have a whole lot of fescue or grass that you would need to bag. We do have Bermuda, but Bermuda doesn't need bagged if you're coming weekly. So. Again, that's something that we just don't do in our area. It's regional differences. What you're going to see is that a lot of people that bag, they're probably up north or they're using walkers or they have some kind of bagging system that they're cutting different types of grass. You know, uh, I think a lot of people are afraid to show the lawns that are weeds, but typically I think that most companies that mow grass, their bread and butter are these type of lawns with weeds. You know, if you're residential, they're just really easy to get. They're everywhere. You can sell these jobs no problem. 
you throw out door hangers in the neighborhood and you canvas out a thousand door hangers, you're going to get 10 or 15 of these. It's just not hard to do. And if you're selling bi-weekly, you're going to get a lot more of them. But that's all up to you. Do you want to cut this kind of stuff every time you come to cut a yard? Or do you want to cut a weekly yard? For me, I don't like cutting two or three times to make a yard look good. Like That's what I have to do on this property is cut it two to three times to make it look good. All right, so this is pretty common. You might get stuff like this inside the yard. Just a little chunk of brick laying down that can really ruin the day. There's not anything behind me except city easement. So I'm gonna toss it back there. It's all overgrown. Well, yeah, nothing back there. Let's go ahead and get back to it. So that's kind of another reason I don't like messing with bi-weeklies. One, the grass grows and it's longer and I mean the grass grows on every yard, but it grows longer in a two week period of time. So it's more work, but then there's going to be stuff in the yard. A lot of the times when it's a bi-weekly yard, it's somebody that doesn't really put their yard as a high priority. So for me, you know, with my, our weekly accounts, it's $50 per service and we come every week. And when we come every week, there's just not a whole lot of grass debris that we're cutting off. So we're not um, spending a bunch of time double cutting. To clean it up we're not spending a bunch of time hauling debris off or raking anything up and we can just bounce from yard to yard to yard but in the beginning i understand that you're probably filling up your route and it might be something that you have to do is take on a lot of these accounts and don't feel bad if you have ugly yards for a long time i was like oh, i really want that nice yard and what you're going to find out is you're going to cut an ugly yard right and right beside it is going to be this really 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 beautiful yard and you're like i just wish i could cut that that'd be so nice well, a couple of years down the road, you're going to get that yard and what you're going to find out, it is a nightmare. Sometimes the beautiful lawns that are super thick, lush, gorgeous grass are way more difficult to cut than the one beside it that's got a ton of weeds. If you're on the same weekly schedule, that bi -week, or that really nice grass might be so thick that it bogs down your mowers and maybe they have it fertilized so much that you have to double and triple cut it even though it's weekly. Don't be afraid to pick up the trash yard. Sometimes some of my trashy yards, like a yard like this, if I had it in my schedule and it was weekly, this is a money-making yard. I'm in and out on this thing. I keep it clean, keep it the way I like. You know, you, you make sure there's nothing there. Things that I like to avoid are like toys and stuff or stuff that would slow you down there. But even then, I'll go pick up a few toys as long as it's not a whole lot. So you'll find out what you like for me. I don't mind yards like this, like I said, as long as they are weekly, because that's quick. wondering I'm double cutting and even on a triple cut of this area right now and it's just because distribution of grass to help hide that and then we've got some stuff that just doesn't cut unless you cut it back and forth in a different it just doesn't cut well unless you cut it in a different direction because it laid over the first time and then laid over a different direction the next time hopefully second or third cut catches those but that's why I'm doing a second and third pass. All right, so if you don't use any power equipment, you might be thinking to yourself, why is his mower sound like that? And if you're a lawn guy, you're probably irritated that I haven't cleaned my carburetor yet. And if you've watched my videos, you know that I'm pretty much ready to be done with this mower. I don't know that I'm gonna sell it. I'll probably keep it around as a backup. But, you know, we bought nine Hustler Trim Stars over the winter. I currently have one in the shop. They're going through it, getting it fixed up, ready to go. And then from there, you know, it'll be the main mower. That X mark will be the backup mower for my regular weekly accounts. And from there, I don't know. I don't plan on using it a whole lot, but it still cuts good, and it's a good machine. 
If you are interested in one of those Hustler trim stars, you can reach out to me on Instagram. We have 136 and 454s that we are selling. Up front, over on this side, the grass wasn't that tall. It wasn't that thick. So when I'm cutting this, it's kind of, uh, you know, I'm not really worried about side discharging some grass into the, to the neighbor's lawn. From one yard to the next, they have weeds. It's not going to matter. If it was a super nice yard, you would want to shoot everything towards the uh, driveway and then you would clean it up off the driveway and the reason being is if a neighbor has a really nice yard and they're anal about their grass and you come along and you side discharge some some weeds into the yard you're gonna have a conversation with them more than likely they're gonna come out and talk to you so just avoid that situation that would be the plus side of having a mulch kit so you keep it under your deck but if they're really anal about the yard they're gonna come out and complain either way man there's, there's some people that are really, really crazy when it comes to grass, and that's okay, it's understandable. But more than likely, you're not gonna have any issues, and what you do is when you're done and you're blowing off the concrete, you blow that grass clippings from the neighbor's lawn back into the lawn that you just cut, and you fan out the grass clippings. Now up here, we've given it some time to dry out, but it's still really wet. This is a spring cut. The grass was holding a lot of moisture in the foliage. So we're dispersing it one more time, we're cutting it. It looks all right. It's kind of to where we want it. It's getting more to where uh, it's workable with the blower. And then from there, what we're going to do is we're going to use the blower and we're going to blow it back and forth and fan it into the lawn. I'm going to come in and I'm going to shoot it all sideways. Remember, we don't want to shoot it into those rock beds or we have the other obstacle here, which is we don't want to shoot towards this bed with all the boxwoods in it. Every yard's a little bit different, especially when you get to these older properties. 70s and older, you start getting the DIY landscaping. You get the stuff like the random tree rings or random bushes planted in the middle of the yard or uh, flower beds around the mailbox. And, you know, just people trying to uh, kind of polish up their lawn and make it their own. Now one of the real common questions I get is uh, selling a property for weekly versus bi-weekly. And uh, the thing is, if you can do a property and come in every week, why would you want to cut it every two weeks for less? Come in every week, charge whatever amount you're going to charge. For me, like I said, I got a $50 minimum. That's what we charge. We come every week. It's consistent. They expect it the same day. If you want to know how to charge that much on a property, it's not, it's not any harder to sell a property at $50 a service versus $35 a service. It's just your communication and your clarity on you know, how you're gonna take care of the property, when you're gonna be there, are you gonna be consistent? You know, How do you communicate how your, your service is gonna be performed? And if you're clear in your communication and you're uh, confident about it, $50 a service is not difficult to sell at all. And then another thing that people ask is, how do I get more weekly lawns? Well, the reality is, if you stop offering bi-weekly, you'll get a lot more weekly lawns, but it's a give-take. If you're trying to start out your business this year, you might need to take on some bi-weeklies to fill your schedule, and then once your schedule is filled to a certain capacity, and you're making whatever amount of income that you need to make, then you can start saying, okay, everything from here on, I'm going to start offering only weekly lawns. If you don't bring up a bi-weekly offer, more than likely they won't either. What I found out is that a lot of people that went with my bi-weekly service we're just going with that because I said yeah it's gonna be uh, it's, it's, it's gonna be 35 to mow your lawn every week and uh, $40 if you want it every two weeks all right five dollars of service but seventy dollars less a month you gave that person a no-brainer to go with getting their lawn cut every two weeks basically what you do is you're gonna blow the grass one way and then blow it back blow it side to side you're getting it to stick in the grass you're avoiding throwing it in the flower beds. I gotta dust that off. And you don't wanna throw it up in here. We have a bunch of leaves built up that, uh, you know, I could have mowed. But today we we're just worrying about the grass. So what I would do is generally on something like this when I pick it up, is I'd do a catch up cut like this. And then the next time I come, I would get the little bit of leaves right there when I'm blowing out. And uh, then I would catch up the stones or whatever, you know, little by little. Once you get to a certain point in the season and things are really rocking and rolling and growing, you don't have time to do everything all at once unless you're playing for, paying for a cleanup. So I would just come in, do the first cut, boom, in and out. You come in, do the next cut, 
and you let them know that progressively their edges are going to get better the grass is going to get better things are going to get nicer and tighter and uh, all the leaves are going to get cleaned up that's how i treat it because the thing is when you're all weekly you do a little and you do a little more and you do a little more after a month it looks awesome let's go ahead and finish this blowing off on the property So I wanted to show you this. You can come through and you can blow all of these, you know, matted down grass clumps out of the lawn just by blowing through the grass. I call it fanning the grass. Now the problem with that is if you do, you're gonna get some grass sticking up, which is what I wanted to show you. And then what's gonna happen is you actually have to mow that again. So what I actually prefer to do on something like this, this is all weeds. This isn't really nice turf. Nice turf is different. Treat it different. Every job's a little different. I'm actually going to let this dry up, right? That's what I would typically do. I'll let this dry up over a week. I'm going to come through before I mow, bust that up, and then it's going to be dry grass that I'm working with and not wet grass because what happens is if I bust it up now and then I mow it again, it gets matted and it does the same thing. Every lawn is different, every lawn cut's different, everything that you do with the lawn business, you might have to adjust a little bit for that specific project. So, like when you see me cutting weird patterns, well, up front, you know, we had the obstacles. I'm gonna cut weird up there. Back here, I'm gonna cut one way and then I'm gonna go another way and then I might go this way. And then maybe I come back and I swoop in because you can't see something on film, but maybe I see some stragglers and I'm gonna mow that straggler there. Considering where we started, this looks much better, right? Now imagine, because this is what you need to do, it's not about this cut so much, it's about the next cut in a week, and the next cut after that, the next cut after that, and the next cut after that. Consistency is what should make the property look beautiful. Not your first cut. Don't come here and spend three hours doing the first cut for somebody that may or may not have you come back. You come in, make it look good, and you let them know. Be very, very specific in your communication. Now, the first cut's gonna be a little messy. When I come back, the consistency is what gets it really back into shape and has it looking really nice. That's something that you should definitely do with your properties. As far as what we're doing here, you know, blowing off the obstacles in the yard around here, we're gonna go through and we're gonna blow all of the fence lines up on the rails of the fence and up on the patio. Anywhere where there's buildup, uh, this one's very important you have to always make sure that the gates are shut and latched i used to go way above and beyond but i realized consistency <laughs> consistency i want to knock out a property make it look pretty good and then i want to do it consistently some people aren't going to like that i would leave a few leaves you can do whatever you want. Go all out. If you got the extra time, go all out. Once your schedule gets full, you just communicate with them. You know, hey, we're $50 minimum and we've got a full schedule. We don't have enough time for a cleanup today. What we can do is we can get your height down. And then as we consistently come back to return to service, as we consistently come back to return to service your property, it's gonna look better and better. And we'll be able to get all the finite details as we continue. On. That's all you gotta do, just communication. All right, so this is the property the next day. We got some rain last night, some wind, but, but as you can see, you know, there's some more helicopters. Those will keep dropping. But what I wanted to show you was the grass. Over here was where it was real, real bad. And you know, it's got a little bit of buildup down there, but when you come back, it's, it's gonna clean up. So, you know, overall it looks pretty good pretty sharp and way 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 better in comparison to when we started but 
I'll tell you again, I was just driving through this neighborhood, saw this one was tall, told the guy I'd come cut his yard. <laughs> I'm not charging for this. This is strictly because I know it would make an awesome video on actually um, teaching somebody that's starting out. Because I know for me, this is like what I got a lot when I started out. And you know, sometimes it's intimidating and scary and sometimes the techniques really make this type of job easier. So I'm doing this for you. I'm taking a lot of time and extra time to, to film it. And now I'm gonna request a, a favor back. If you could just give us a thumbs up, that would be awesome. And if you're new to the channel and you made it this far and you like it, if you'd subscribe, hey, I appreciate it.